Hello, let's talk about the photographs you should take during the new patient examination to be used during the new patient consultation. I'm going to talk about what photographs to take and how to take them. Excellent dental photography is a critical part of a comprehensive dental practice. I'm going to show you the 12 photographs to take on every new patient and how to take them. This can double your practice in a month. I know the effect it's had on my practice. If I was not using excellent dental photography when communicating with patients, I think our practice would diminish by more than half. The objective of the photography is you want the patient to clearly understand their presenting dental condition and what their options are. These excellent photographs taken with a diagnostic camera can double your practice the right way within a short period of time if used in conjunction with the dental diagnosis and the aesthetic restorative dentistry books. Now remember, the objective is not to sell dentistry. You're not trying to sell, you're trying to communicate effectively. And that's what the books and excellent dental photography will do for you. If you want to purchase these books, click on the link below in the description. Now this is not a cell phone. This is not a Polaroid. This is a high-end diagnostic camera. These photographs have got to be outstanding. So these are the 12 photographs to be taken. The full face smile, the close-up smile, just of the smile, the anterior teeth with closed bite, lips retracted, retracted lips, teeth together, and the anterior teeth slightly open bite with the lips retracted, with the teeth slightly apart so you can see if the teeth are worn or chipped in the anterior. A lateral view of the right side, cuspid to second molar with lips retracted. This shows if you have un any unsightly uh, old porcelain metal crown margins, abfraction, uh, gingival recession, and then a lateral view of the left side. Occlusal view of the maxillary right posterior teeth. This is critical. It's very important that that be taken at a right angle to the teeth so you can see any broken fillings, uh, cracks in the teeth. Occlusal view of the maxillary left posterior teeth. It's not just a big occlusal mirror of all the teeth. You want to take the right side and the left side and then take an occlusal view of the mandibular of the mandibular right posterior teeth and an occlusal view of the left posterior teeth and then an incisal view of the maxillary anterior teeth and an incisal view of the mandibular anterior teeth. Take three occlusal incisal views of each arch, not one occlusal view of the entire arch. You want the patient to see what? Detail. Detail. These photographs will make up for a million words. You could talk till you were blue in the face and they're not going to understand it like they'll understand it with one photograph, especially if you're using the dental diagnosis and the aesthetic restorative dentistry books prior to having the patient look at the photographs of their teeth so the patient understands what pathology is and what their aesthetic options are with these two books. So the full face, this is too close. You want to see a little bit outside the ears. This is too far and the patient's tipped back. This is just right. You want to see the ears on each side and you'd like the face to be parallel to the camera lens. The close-up smile, too close. You're not seeing the corners of the mouth. This is too far. You don't want to see things that distract, like a nose and hair in the nose. This is just right. Just past the corners of the mouth. Don't get the nose. Don't get the chin. You want to see the smile. The anterior teeth close bite, lips retracted. So the lips are retracted and the teeth are together. This is too far away. It's distracting to the patient if they see the retractors or a lot of gum tissue. You just want to see the teeth. This is, too, this is too far away. So you're seeing the nose. Both of these are too far. Too much peripheral stuff 
This is just right, back to about the bicuspids on each side. Not a lot of lips, no nose, chin. Take a lot of the gingival tissue away, just enough to show the attached gingiva and the uh, non-keratinized gingiva. Anterior teeth slightly open, lips retracted. This is just right. Lateral views, this is just right on each side. And I like to take the lateral views with the teeth together in occlusion so we can demonstrate the occlusion of the patient to the patient. And if you ever wanted a record of that occlusion, but you see you can see the abfraction here, the leakage under that crown, the gum recession, leakage around that filling. Now what I would do differently on these photographs, blow the saliva or suction the saliva off the teeth so you've got a clear view of the of the margins of the teeth and the, and the restorations. I also want to see the attached gingiva, whether they have attached gingiva or they don't. Occlusal view, maxillary right posterior teeth. This is not straight on. See if it's not, you want to take the picture along the long axis of the teeth, not to the side because you can't see the margins of those fillings to see if they're leaky or not. Also you can't see cracked teeth and other things. This is too far away. This is just right. It's along the long axis of the teeth. So you see the fracture right here. See the leakage around these fillings. Same thing on the other side. This is not straight on. You want to view it most of the time. You want the picture to be taken along the long axis of the posterior teeth so you can see the margins of the fillings, the crack right there. Be sure you uh, blow off all the saliva from the occlusal surface or it will uh, keep you from seeing the detail in the occlusal surface of the teeth. All these pictures are taken with either a thin occlusal mirror or a large occlusal mirror. Most You don't want the nose showing. There's nothing worse than showing a picture straight up the nose. Also, if it's a woman, you don't want to show her upper lip. If there's hair on the upper lip, that will distract and she will not see that picture. So be sure you end the picture at this part of the lip and retract that lip so that you don't see any hair on a woman on her upper lip. And this is terrible up the nose. This is about right, right here. See, and you can see the wear on the incisal edges of those maxillary anterior teeth. The mandibular posterior teeth, too far away. You've got too much peripheral stuff in here. You've got the teeth in the mirror, plus you've got the teeth not in the mirror. And the patient can't dissect through all that and figure out this is what they want to be looking at. You know, this is two sets of teeth where you see this and this. This is what you want. Straight line into the, along the long axis of the teeth. And you want it, the picture to go from about the posterior of the second molar to the cuspids. Right, same thing. See, I'm taking all the peripheral stuff out so the focus is on the things I want the patient to see. We're not trying to sell anybody anything. The objective of these photographs, again, is for the patient to understand their presenting situation and what pathology looks like. So this is the incisal view of the mandibular anterior teeth. Too much stuff in here. We've got the edges of the mirror. We've got the retractor, the lips. That doesn't add anything to the picture. This is two sets of teeth. They see these and they see the teeth in the mirror. You only want the teeth in the mirror to be in the picture. This is just right from about the cuspid by cuspid to the other cuspid by cuspid. You can see the wear into the uh, dentin of those teeth. Also, you'll be able to see any plaque and calculus accumulation on the teeth. So when taking the occlusal view of posterior teeth, if possible, have the patient open wide enough so the occlusal surfaces of the teeth being photographed appear straight on in the mirror and not slanted. In other words, you want the lens of the camera to be parallel to the long axis of the teeth. Exclude anything but the teeth being photographed from the pictures. Zero in on the teeth 
A tight, detailed field is better than a broad field. When taking maxillary incisal view of the anterior teeth, exclude the patient's nose from the picture. If facial lip hair appears in the maxillary anterior incisal view of a woman's photographs, forget it. Cut that part off the picture before she views it or she is not going to focus on the teeth. That's all she's going to see is that hair on her lip. When taking full face smile photos, have the patient sit up in the chair so that their face is parallel to the camera, like this. If they're sitting back in the chair, their face will appear distorted. Include approximately one inch lateral to the patient's ears. It looks better. The photographic image quality is as important as the actual photography. If the quality of the image is not excellent, you defeat the purpose of showing the patient photographs of their teeth. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.